Today we're going to review this box of rags. They're pretty sweet actually, made by Scott. Rags in a box. They did trademark it so you know it's good. They're strong, absorbent, durable for wet and dry use. So there's really not much else you could ask for with a box of rags. Unless this box of rags is being used to clean off your new to you CNC machine. Yes, as you can see, maybe most of it, I don't know, is the depth of field wide enough to see it? <laughs> Just move this CNC machine in, it's a mill. It's made by Brother. It is a TC31A drill and tap machine. So it's not exactly a, a, a strong mill, but it's really fast and I don't need it for production work. So this is gonna be, let's just call it my retirement toy. I'm gonna use this to make things for as long as I possibly can. Let's uh, check out the inside here. I've just been going through kind of cleaning stuff up. This here is our tool holder. It's got 26 positions on there, currently has one edge finder in there. And uh, so I am going to have to purchase lots of tool holders, lots of collets. And uh, the collets that I have are actually all ER32 and ER16. Turns out that we can actually get lots of ER32 and ER16 collets, so that is amazing. But this machine, I was telling you, it's not exactly like a, you know, a, a hog or sort of machine. It's not for really fast milling production. You can see that the actual column itself is mounted on the, whatever it's called, the ways. It traverses this way and this way, this way and this way, and then the head itself goes up and down. But you can see the tracks there and there, and then the secondary set of tracks there, I think for X, I forget which way it is, X or Y. I'm much more used to working on a lathe than a mill. So this is gonna be a learning experience. But if we look down over here, that is the work table. And there's actually two work tables. So it'll switch positions. Uh, I forget what it's called, but essentially you can be doing some mill work on this side. When it's done, you switch tables, you have fresh work in there, and then you can pull your old work off from the little bay that we have over there. You know, it needs a little cleanup, just making sure that everything is good before I hook up the power. And that's gonna be the next part of this is hooking up the power. Uh, maybe, I don't know if you can get that camera to look straight up, but there's our power coming in. There's the three phase for the old machine. That was 100 and, uh, let's see, 125 amp breaker on that machine. And I think we pulled 150 amp service on a 200 amp circuit. And we're gonna have to install uh, basically a new breaker box, pull that down to uh, I think number eight wire is what we settled on and pull a new run for it. And as you can see, it's pretty wrecked in the shop right now. We've got just everything everywhere. A bunch of my old tools from the old lathe here. Uh, like I said, I still have a whole bunch of ER32 collets. So that's really nice. I'll be able to use those along with the ER16s that the TAG machines use. Although I'll be using uh, higher quality collets than what you could typically get through a tag vendor. I'll be getting some some pioneer collets for those. And instead of having uh, half a thou run out, we're gonna have tenth uh, or two tenths of a thou run out. And that's just gonna make our tool life much, much better. So um, all of these are high precision collets that I have. And I just need to switch those ER16s out as well. So that's, uh, that's where we're at. The next task is going to be getting into this electrical. Of course, we're only going to hire somebody who is licensed and, licensed and bonded for the work because that's the smart thing to do. And yeah, uh, end up pushing a new run through and that's pretty much that. Then we hook up the machine, make sure that our phase rotation is in the right direction and we are off to the races or to the machining or whatever it's gonna be. So where my cameraman is standing now is where that bench is going to go and then everything else is going to do this whole uh, musical chairs of space moving because as you can see it's pretty packed in here this is kind of my my toy shop this is my machine shop in here we've got a little bit of inventory from home hobbies but uh, mostly it's just my toys and my tools in here so yeah yeah this is the the, the back end the sneak peek of the things that i like to do for fun machines. That's what I like. 
So the first thing on that machine is going to be to make another power winder actually. So making machines with machines, that's, that's really what I like to do. And my cameraman's nodding back there because he's going to be the one on that power winder making it for him basically so he can live out at the river and have a good time and wind whenever he feels like waking up at 2 a.m., slam a couple beers. I don't know how he works. Oh, no, he's, no, no, no slamming beers before work, he says. <laughs> that's a good idea. We, we don't want to be miswinding motors. But uh, yeah, so it's, it's gonna be for him and that's awesome because then he can work out at the river where he lives and doesn't have to commute into the shop all the time to do the work. When he does come in for the uh, cameraman operations, it'll just be awesome for everybody. So awesome for me, awesome for everybody in the long run. I'm pretty excited about this, if you can't tell. I'm trying not to shout though, because you know we got, we got people doing stuff over there. We got a storefront right behind that wall. <laughs> there's, there's people actually doing real work today, so. <laughs> Well, if you've got any questions about, you know, meaning of life or why I would get such a large machine just to play around with it, then feel free to leave those comments down below. Do my best to get to them. As always, thanks for tuning in and have a great day.